Canon's 135mm lens is a beast. In this video, I'll tell you if this lens is worth the $2,000 price, I'll show you how it performs, and I'll let you know if you should add this to your kit. First though, if you're a photographer looking for honest reviews like this, hit the subscribe button below to help grow the channel. If you're a subscriber already, welcome back. Okay, let's give this a try. The 135mm focal length is one of my all-time favorites. It's a great lens for portraits, as you get some of the compression of a long telephoto lens, but not as much as something 200mm or above. A lot of portrait shooters, myself included, tend to use an 85mm for most portrait work, but there's a look from a 135mm lens that I just adore. I use wide aperture 135s on all kinds of work, obviously portraits, on corporate jobs, and for weddings it's fantastic. The wide aperture lets you blur a distracting background, but it still lets you get shots of the bride and groom without having to be all up in their face. Most of my career has been spent as a sports photographer, and I'd use a 135 for portraits of athletes, but I'd rarely use it for the actual sports. Most 135mm lenses are too slow to keep up with the fast-paced action of mountain biking or kayaking or stuff like that. When Sony shipped their 135mm G Master, that all changed. These images are from Sony's launch event for the 135mm lens, and it was the first time I was able to shoot something as fast-paced as basketball completely wide open and still track the eyes. With the Canon RF 135mm f1.8, there are now two lenses in the mirrorless world that can shoot any subject, anytime, any place. The 135 RF is built with 17 elements and 12 groups, including three ultra-low dispersion lenses, and it has Canon's air sphere coating that it says reduces ghost and flaring. The Canon 135mm RF is not a light or a small lens. It weighs in at about 935 grams, which is just over 2 pounds. Attached to my test R6 Mark II, the combination of body and lens comes in at 1,684 grams. That's 3 and a quarter pounds. Now, there's some lenses where the size and the weight don't bother me, super wide primes being one of the places where I'll happily take a bit of weight for a lot better image quality and performance. Speaking of weight, the ridiculously large lens hood is 76 grams just by itself. But that's one of the few negative things you're going to hear me say about the 135mm Canon RF. The lens hood is silly looking and too heavy. Having so few negative issues is a really good sign. If you've seen my other lens videos, and I'll link to them up there, you know that I'm a big fan of controls on the surface of a lens. There's a dedicated control ring on the front of the Canon RF lenses. It's a programmable feature that can be used to change lots of different camera settings. I wish every lens had this control ring because it's so handy. You can also switch the image stabilization on and off on the lens, as well as switch from auto to manual focus, and there are two programmable focus hole buttons on the lens. The 135mm RF lens has Canon's lightning-fast nano USM focusing motors. It makes the lens so quick. Strangely though, you can actually hear the motor when the lens is focusing. It's not exactly loud, but it would definitely be picked up by the onboard microphone during video shooting. But if you're using the onboard microphone for anything besides syncing up your audio, you're probably not going to end up with great audio anyhow. The most common use of 135mm is for portrait, and this lens excels at portraiture. Images are tack sharp, the bokeh is creamy and delicious, and the colors render beautifully. For weddings, this is going to be a killer lens. You will be able to capture the bride and the groom and the attendees moving around and doing things wide open in ways that you never could before. Even at night with low lighting, this lens is super accurate and it creates amazing images. The lighting in this photo is incredibly harsh. It was provided almost entirely by several small bulbs around this kiosk. Yet the face is in focus, the dynamic range for this ISO is impressive, and the snowflakes make a soft looking scene without losing detail everywhere else. The lens is fantastic when it comes to human subject recognition, but it's also really great with animal eye detect. Most 135mm lenses are not great at focusing on the eyes of small subjects. Obviously, this is partially due to the camera's autofocusing system, but it also comes down to the lens. If the lens can't move as fast as the autofocus system tells it to, you end up without pictures of little things like these birds in focus. Those parrots are obviously sitting still. Parrots were bred, of course, to sit on the shoulder of pirates, but these little blue jays are moving kind of quickly. They need to get in there and get out some of these walnuts before the rest of the blue jays arrive. This red-tailed hawk was hundreds of meters away, but the camera and the lens locked onto it and followed it as it flew across the sky. Even at a crop like this, the details are really amazing. Likewise, these images that my son and I took at the Biodome in Montreal show the incredible focusing power of this lens and this camera system. Small primates like these golden tamarins are really hard to focus on. So are these, whatever these guys are called. But look at this, it picked out the eyes even when the eyes were behind branches. This is not something most 135mm lenses can do. 
Thanks to a polar vortex, the temperatures plunged into the single digits where I live during my tests, so my sports-based focus tests were limited. I've looked over quite a number of examples from other reviewers that I know, and they show how fantastic the autofocus on Canon's R-series cameras is these days and on this lens. My friend Jared at Frono's Photo was able to shoot sports tests with a Canon 135mm RF, and he let me share this clip of his sports AF tests with you. I was out in San Diego. We went out to the Olympic Center and there was a lot going on out there where I was able to photograph those BMX bike riders coming around the, the course. I shot everything basically at 1.8 with this lens because I want that isolation, but I also wanted to see how the autofocus was and time and time again, I nailed it. It nailed it time and time again. I'm sure you know how to find his channel, but links to this specific video are in the description below and right here. Don't forget to go look at his video after you finish this one, and please subscribe to his channel if you're not subscribed already. My recommendation for 135mm lenses used to be that if you're shooting portraits or weddings, you should consider buying one. This lens is so good, and the autofocus on Canon system is so good now, that this is a lens you should consider buying even if you don't do portrait work. While it feels expensive for a prime lens, it is really not considering what you get out of it. You get a fantastic portrait lens, a fantastic sports lens, and an all around just great looking image for $2,000. Okay, $2,000 is a lot of money, right? And you could buy a lot of other lenses with that amount of money. And if you don't have something like a 24 to 70 or a 70 to 200, start there. But if you do any kind of professional work from portraits to weddings to even now sports, this is a lens you should really consider buying. We're at a point in lens technology where all lenses make good images and focus well. This makes fantastic images and focuses even better. If we could just get rid of this massive lens hood, this would be a perfect lens. I'll have links to the lens below and I'm also again going to link to Frono's photo so you can jump over there. Over here you can find a playlist of videos I think that you will like and over here you can subscribe to the channel. For Dave Tries This, I'm David Schloss. Thanks so much for giving this a try.